You know when you see some kind of review video or maybe an analysis about how Phi is the biggest waste of AI computer programming in history and how she'll never compare to the flawless beauty of companionship that is Minna, the, the princess of magic fire hair or whatever. And you see some clip from a game that's used in that video that makes you go, Oh, oh man, that, that game looks pretty cool. I wish I could play that. What, what game is that? What, what's it about? I've never even heard of it. Then check this out, you, you little bitch. Ow. It's a new video series, and it's for talking about some lesser-known gems in gaming. Now, the purpose of this series is not to judge, or even necessarily review the game, although most of the notes about these games will be generally positive, because, you know, the word gems. But it's to bring hidden masterpieces and well-crafted adventures into the sunlight. Maybe give you a cool new game to play if you're sitting on your ass on a Sunday afternoon trying to decide whether to play Mario Galaxy for the twelfth time this month or go binge watch every episode of Arby and the Chief to laugh at voice synthesizer cock jokes. Instead, you can spend your time playing an exciting, classic, and yet brand new game that tickles your fancies in ways you never knew your sensitive little fancies could be tickled. Uh, the series contains spoilers, by the way. I know that kind of defeats the purpose of promoting a game to play because you won't want to play the game I'm talking about if it gets spoiled and you might have to watch the spoiler to be able to want to play the game, uh, but the point is it's just a rundown of what the game is. Hopefully you can still enjoy the game after these videos, besides this game doesn't really have any major story spoilers that you couldn't guess yourself. Anyway, welcome to the Hidden Gems Archive. I'd like to start the bidding at Priceless with a game called Oddworld Munch's Odyssey. Now, it's pretty likely that you've heard of the Oddworld franchise. It was at least moderately popular and well-received between 1997 with Oddworld Abe's Odyssey and 2005 with the release of Oddworld Stranger's Wrath. Don't worry, we'll get to that one someday. And since Stranger's Wrath, Oddworld has only gotten one more game after nine years, a remaster of Abe's Odyssey titled New and Tasty. It's like this poster from the first game, get it? So it's a pretty far and few between sort of franchise. Nothing like, say, Crash Bandicoot with a total of 10 title games, 4 spin-offs, and 2 party games, apparently. So, even though Oddworld Inhabitants Incorporated, the team behind these works of beauty, grew a dedicated fan base over the course of 8 years, they certainly weren't as popular as some other developer companies, like Naughty Dog or, say, Capcom. But Oddworld Inhabitants were dedicated to building community connections and creating an experience that leaves an impression. The president of the company, Lauren Lanning, even stated that when they make a game, they want to be able to make people feel better, rather than just feel like they won. The Oddworld games just bleed creativity and personality, and Oddworld Munch's Odyssey, which came out in 2001, is easily my favorite game from the series. For several reasons, which you may or may not agree with by the time this video is over. And the entire universe, or Oddiverse, Oddityverse, fucking whatever, pretty much can't be beaten in a battle of charisma and... Uh, one-eyed sheep technology. What the fuck is that? Now, I never played the first two Oddworld games prior to playing Munch's Odyssey. In fact, this was the first game I ever played, at the innocent age of six years old. And even though I only played Abe's Odyssey and Abe's Exodus more recently, this game still captured my attention as a favorite and a classic. And that's why this is the first episode of the series, because I only know two people who have even heard of the Oddworld games, and only one of those people has played Munch's Odyssey. And it's a damn shame, because this game and the entire series deserve some serious recognition. Sorry, I know I use the word series a lot. It's kind of confusing, but I got tired of saying franchise. Hey, can you start the video already, please? I ain't fine. Whatever. Fuck. The game begins with backstories of both protagonists of the game. Abe, the stitch-lipped Mudokin, with a voice as smooth as goat butter. You better stay here. And Munch, the one-legged gab whose walk cycle sounds like a dying seal being smacked with a rubber tube. Abe has been on his own adventure, escaping from the meat processing plant Rupture Farms, running from scorpions on steroids, and trying to search for the rest of his Mudokin brothers who drank so much booze they turned into fucking ghosts. Just kidding, those guys are spirits of Mudokins whose bones are being stolen by the Gluckins. You're following this, right? And Munch is the last gabbit on the planet, and during his search for his friends, who were stupid enough to get kidnapped by fishermen, he's stupid enough to get kidnapped by scientists who want to use Munch as a radar on legs. Or just one leg, I guess, so that they can track down more innocent animals to experiment on. Look, it makes sense if you just watch the backstory cutscenes, okay? Munch's entire story is being told to Abe by Barney the Big Purple Scrotum, named the Almighty Raisin, who tells Abe that he needs to save Munch from Viker's labs in order to save all of the Mudakins and the eggs of Abe's unborn brothers. This plot is about two inches away from a Cheeto-induced acid trip, and I absolutely love it. So you've got the history and experiences of the main characters, and it's so weird and unique that your first instinct is to go, ah, this game is way too fucking bizarre, but I gotta see where this is going. Not a 
that tutorial you So the game starts, and you're greeted with a visual splendor of a cave that might as well be the almighty Raisin's colon. So you walk around for a bit and... God. Damn! These controls feel good. You're not performing the hit Broadway show Odd World on Ice, and you're not at the speed of sound. like in Sonic Heroes of the Storm. Movement is super smooth, and you can move the stick with a different amount of force to make your feet squeak, take a nice stroll through the lower intestine, or sprint like your brother's disgusting egg crate lives depend on it. So you're making your way through the cave, but before you even get halfway through it, you're blasted right in the face with the most memorable character in the whole game. The Shaman! This sarcastic, smarmy prick not only gives you some pretty decent tips and helps you along your quest, but will deliver the single greatest line if you try to stand in his ring of floating blueberries and talk to him. Not a ring, stupid! Stand in the outer ring! You got squishy little dodgeballs on the ground called spoo shrubs that make the most satisfying sound when you pick them up. Oh man, that feels good. And you can perform an ancient war ritual chant that regrows spoo shrubs so that you can have... This game is so damn odd. But in a good way. So, anywho, the cave is just a tutorial, right? Let, let's get to the real game. It's just through this to- Whoa! Yeah, that's pretty good looking right there, is what that is. We haven't even gotten to the first level yet, but look how inviting that looks. And it's just a, a Wily e. Coyote wall drawing of the forest moon of Endor. So you get past the loading screen and BAM! You've entered Odd World. You've got a gorgeous world to explore. Hills to climb, rivers to cross, spoos to collect, and... Oh, okay, you gotta talk to me about some real quick? That's fine, thanks. So the game is kind of linear. It's split into levels where you either control Abe, Munch, or both once you can eventually switch between the two at will. Some levels have a big open area, and some levels are like a warehouse tour. If that warehouse tour guide was a green squid with bionic legs. It's a nice adventure, as you slowly move forward on your quest through different levels, saving the appropriate companions of each character, and killing those greedy corporate bastards of Oddworld. So what about the gameplay? Can I roll, wall jump, and dive like Mario? No, but you can do a sweet 50-foot cannonball into the pool. Could I could you command my allies like in Halo Wars? No, but you can fart in front of Mudakins to make them laugh. <laughs> can I shoot lasers from my railgun and fuck it? No, of course not. But you can certainly slap your best friend to make him cry. Game Informer, 10 out of 10. The levels generally consist of finding your companions, bringing them through the levels, and either making them beat the shit out of bad guys for you, or safely carrying them through a fucking war zone to get to the portal that leads them to safety. Each level is like its own minigame. Sometimes you're playing extreme Minesweeper water polo, sometimes you're running through a herd of heroin-addicted termites after drinking liquid speed that makes you run faster than Captain Falcon with bunny ears on, and sometimes you're playing Crippled Sheep Herder Simulator 2001. But the levels aren't just a mishmash of arcade-style mayhem goody good times, oh no 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 no, there's a story. After Abe makes his way through the spoo shrub forest, the game puts you in the slimy, bouncy shoes of Munch, as he masterfully executes his escape from the testing facility of Vikers Labs. And this cutscene right before you start playing as Munch is where the game really tries to show you what kind of game it is. These characters have so much personality and simply ooze a tasty substance that you can't help but fall in love with. It's comedic, has brilliant voice acting, and really drives home the personality of Munch and his relationship with these little balls of cute and poofy death called Fuzzles. I've played this game more times than I can count, and this is the cutscene that I quote word for word along with as it's playing because it just melted into my brain so fluidly. This is what Oddworld is. Odd characters saying odd lines getting eaten alive by odd creatures. Oh, and also the farting. How you doing? Eventually you save the fuzzles and escape Biker's labs through the poop chute. And at the same time, Abe finds the big well, which is basically just a giant magic anus in the ground. And the two characters collide, fall to the ground, and both die. Game over. Thanks for watching. This point in the game is what I would consider to be the frosting on top of the scrap cake. The, the gooey filling in the center of Paramite Pies. It's the equivalent of cracking open a cold Sobe with the boys. The cutscene of Abe and Munch falling out of the sky together comes to an end, and this is the first visual we are greeted with to start the level. The game just flicked on the fucking light switch and went, Yeah, look at this fucking companionship right here. Look at that beautiful lens flare. This is a friendship of dreams. Now go drink some fucking aqua bells, yeah! You can switch between the two characters. You can carry Munch around like the useless slug he is. And you can even make the other one follow you around. 
Unless Munch is on foot, good luck getting him to keep up with you. They have different counts for how much spoos they have, so you have to decide who should get more spoos to open certain spoos locks. Yeah, they're called spoos locks. Only Munch can swim in water and command fuzzles around, and only Abe can possess enemies and tell his little bitch brothers what to do. I know I just said I would talk more about the story, but fuck it, back to the gameplay. Here's what each character can do. Starting with Abe, he's the agile one. He's the one you need when you have to jump onto ledges, look around for shit to blow up, or sneak past sleeping enemies. He never completed swim class, but he can use that chant I mentioned earlier to create a magical orb at the cost of spoos to take control of enemies and even random creatures. Can't get through that high security area? That's fine, just take control of that dude with a big gun and fuck some shit up. Having some trouble with animal allergies? Okay, possess that dog and make him run into the giant spinning death blade. Mission accomplished. Abe can carry Munch and his Mudakin buddies, slap the birds out of people, and drink dangerous chemicals that make him run fast and jump super high. Pretty helpful guy, if you ask me. Munch is just as useful, but in different areas. Munch can't move around very fast unless he's in a wheelchair, but he can swim. He has that sonar device on his head, which lets him rescue fuzzles, control machinery like cranes and badass robots, and he can drink some grape soda that lets him use his sonar implant like a deadly taser. Both characters can take drinks from vending machines that turn them into athletes, give them magic powers, or restore their health. They can also both lead their comrades with voice commands, which range from, hey, go kick their ass. Go meet them up. <laughs> Calm the fuck down for a second. Just sit tight, be cool. And how to spend five straight minutes laughing at the same joke. Each level is an adventure and challenge in not only finding where to go, but also how to use each other's talents together to find the best way forward and overcome each challenge. You can beat the level in different ways depending on whatever best suits your desires. You could run through this gauntlet of bombs first, or you could kill all the enemies so you don't have to worry about hearing that heartbreaking scream of the Mudaket scrubs. Sure, you could spend the time herding all the meeps into the pen with Munch in his wheelchair, or you can make Abe do all the work and carry each one to the pen one by one so you don't have to deal with the AI constantly running where you don't want them to. It's the joy of creating the synchronization and satisfaction that comes with cooperation. I mean, yeah, you're cooperating with yourself because it's a single player game, but you still love having these two characters work together because you love them both as individuals and you want to see them build a friendship with each other to achieve their goals. I mean, look how cute they are. How could you not want that face to have a friend? <laughs> Oh my god. Anyway, that's pretty much the gameplay. I don't want to give away all the good bits. You run around and kick some ass, run around and get your ass kicked, run around and grab some spoos, or run around and try to find the best way not to portray your entire species in one fluid motion. But back to the story. So Grimace tells Abe and Munch that they have to work together to save each other's species. I don't get it. Fuck you. Abe's gotta save all of the Mudakins, which has been stated several times already. I know, sorry. And Munch, being the last of his species, needs to steal a priceless can of caviar eggs to prevent it from being sold at an auction to the highest bidder. Who I guess just gets to eat caviar? Whoa, congratulations. But how are these two gonna manage that? I mean, you can't just walk into Viker's labs, it's heavily guarded. And you can't just go to that auction. Abe's a wanted criminal and Munch is an escaped test subject. Do these two got a plan? Well, you betcha down unders they do. Enter Lulu. Now, Oddworld is full of these creatures called Gluckins. They're basically the rich, greedy corporate douchebags that want to turn the entire planet into a food processing plant. It's kind of not a cool thing to do. But Lulu is the Gluckin who didn't pay attention during Scumbag 101, so he's kind of a lowlife. Basically, Abe possesses Lulu to start a funding campaign to make Lulu rich beyond imagination. And now Abe and Munch need to find all of the wealthy Gluckins around town to possess them and force them to donate all of their moolah to the Lulu fund. Then Lulu gets rich enough to make his way to that super fancy Gabiar auction, where Abe once again Again possesses Lulu to waste his entire fortune. Hip hip hooray! Munch has his tadpole family back, Abe got help along the way to save his Mudokin pals, and all of the Oddworld facilities are shut down and liberated. The end. But wait! Why should you play this game? Well, to be honest, who cares? Uh, play the game if it looks fun. In my opinion, I think it deserves a shot. But there are a few reasons why this game has become one of my absolute favorites. First of all, the levels are so unique from one another that sometimes that load screen pops up with the title of the level, and I get so excited because I've been waiting for that level to come for so long, and I can't wait to jump down that giant tube and land that perfect money shot into that cannon at the bottom. Mm. You go from picking up slogs in Slogga 2813 and dropping them into the fan blades to slaughtering everyone in the Viker Suites with a needle gun. It's so much goddamn fun! The variety in the gameplay keeps things interesting without throwing out too many new mechanics that you have to constantly learn. 
You obviously already know how to control the crane, but you can use it to either get Abe to a new spot, drop explosives on enemies, or transport these egg crates to safety. Holy hell, fuck this tedious bullshit. You get plenty of experience using these special shrines to upgrade Jumu Dockets, but sometimes the game buffs up your entourage for you, so you can go absolutely kick some ass. This game was made for psychotic children with no moral compass. The second reason to play the game is for the characters. Now, I don't just mean Abe and Munch, sure, they're the peanut butter and jelly that make up the sandwich of Oddworld, but all the other enemies and personalities are like the, the cherry on top of that sandwich. Okay, that was a bad analogy. But look at how many enemies there are. You, you got you got Spooktopus. You got uh, uh, Spooktopus with a squirt gun. You got uh, 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 Spooktopus with a cute outfit and a squirt gun. You got fucking Rotten Slenderman and uh, Armored Rotten Slenderman with a walking cane. And you got fucking Elephant Tankatron 5000. You've got almost 40 characters and enemy variants, and it fills the world with a new experience and challenge with every level. Look at me, Dad. I'm a demon crab with no arms, running around biting all of my friends and shouting my mating call into the sky. All right, son, I think you've had enough video games for today. But the biggest reason I can give as my recommendation to play this game is just for the hell of it. It's got so many goofy and ridiculous scenes, and you'll find yourself laughing at some stupid scenario you thought up where you accidentally threw Munch onto a water mine, then revived him from an egg just to slap him and hear the noises he makes when he gets hit. Or you turn yourself invisible to sneak up on a sleeping slig as you carry him to the edge of the water, as he begs for his life before you kamikaze yourself into the water so you don't have to live with your choices afterwards. If you look up the Munch's Odyssey Attract trailer, you can pretty much get the perfect idea of the kind of chaos you can ensue in this game. If you're even slightly curious or intrigued, go pick up this game. You can get it for like five bucks, probably. I don't know. It is an odd and refreshingly twisted game, and I cannot recommend it enough. Don't get the HD version, by the way. The hopping sound from lunch sounds disgusting. <laughs> Oh, hey, uh, glad you made it through that entire video. It means a lot. If you liked the video, be sure to share it with your friends that like people with sultry, smooth voices and questionable opinions. As you can see, I had a lot of fun making this video, and uh, I hope you had a lot of fun watching it. If you have any suggestions for a future episode in the series, be sure to let me know. I may or may not own the game, but I can certainly try to get my hands on it. Also, if you have any notes about the show, be sure to let me know that as well. Since this is my first episode, I assume there's going to be some flaws, so I would love some creative advice. But thanks again for watching, and uh, see you next time. Bye.